Andy House would like to introduce the story Cold Wind on the Wild Mound based on the true story in the western region South Vietnam Chapter 2 The Story of Mrs. Chin and Her Daughter On that day there were two mother and daughter who lost to this land. The mother looked unpredictable because of the wrinkles on the dark face. One of her legs was cut, but her appearance was very nimble. The girl was about seven or eighteen, with pink cheeks and long black hair. They come from an old boat. Mothers hold beams to drive the canoe to the end of the river wharf. At dusk, the river began to change color. The wind flowed through each of the cold clothes. Everyone looked out. There were a few people who came to ask. People in this area are very few. So whenever anyone came here, everyone will be happy. So since then, the end of the hamlet has an extra small leaf roof. Every day, the farm work is extremely miserable. Mrs. Chin takes all responsibility, the daughter at home to cook and wait for her mother to eat. You can see how much she loves the girl. Although she wore a ragged clothes, but her daughter was decent in a clean three-piece dress. And in response to her mother's love, the little girl always surrounds her, chirping like a baby bird, making her mother happy. Life passed but it was very hard but it was quite peaceful for them. The bigger the girl, the more beautiful. She was like a newly hatched flower that shouldn't have been in this deserted countryside. The mother began to feel anxious when she realized the eyes of the boys in the village for her daughter. For her, the daughter was like a treasure, only afraid of losing her, only afraid of her daughter being stained. Her life was too much miserable. Now her life is for her daughter. Yet her life was so cruel to her, when it stubbornly took away her only source of life. How much hope she cherished and lighted her life. On one afternoon during the flood season, everyone heard the sound of Ms. Chin's sounding scream coming from the small hut. When they arrived, they saw her screaming at her daughter's name. Where is her daughter? People ask each other but nobody knows. The small house was empty. The ash was cold. The water was vast. Where could the girl go? People split up to find. They called the girl's name Echo the field flooded with floodwaters. At night, each canoe returned in frustration. Mrs. Chin was crazy. She asked if anyone saw her daughter. Normally, the girl just hangs around the house. Only when she was with her mother, she dared to leave the small hut. Mrs. Chin just left for a while. When she looked back, she saw her daughter watching. Yet, when she returned, she called and no one responded. Where did she go? What happened? Everyone looked at each other shaking their heads. Maybe not the girl who slipped and drowned? No way. Because the water around the house only reached the level of human breasts. She also had no way to go far. Because Mrs. Chin took the only boat. Late at night, when the last boat returned, they said that they had been searching very far very deep in the forest, but could not find her. Everyone has to return. Tomorrow they will continue to search. Mrs. Chin cried her daughter's name. Then she got up and asked to go to find her daughter. Everyone has to appoint her custodians. Because the night falls, in addition to the vast field of water, dark, not seeing the face. But at midnight, people did not see Mrs. Chin. The poor mother had left to look for her at any time. In the midst of the night, every wind blew cold. She seemed to tear the night out. 
her voice was hoarse because of the call. Only the sound of her heart was sobbing. In the early morning, when the sky was still dark, everyone was anxious to search. They heard a cry. No, not a human language but the sound of an injured animal. The screams of that painful still haunting many people's memories for a long time. It was Mrs. Chin's voice. Somehow, perhaps it was because of the mother's hunch that she found her daughter in the immense field. Everyone hurriedly followed her voice. Where the mound rose in the middle of the field like an oasis is a pitiful spectacle. Mrs. Chin hugged the girl now as just a lifeless body. It is very difficult for people to pull Mrs. Chin out of her child. She was like a fierce beast. Not letting anyone near the girl's corpse. Everybody touched her. She scratched. Her eyes gleaming. Her teeth hissing. Her voice was only a growl in her throat. Having to wait until late in the afternoon. When she was tired. Everyone pulled the girl's body out of her. Tying her up to take her back. They buried the girl. The women replaced her with clean clothes. Because her clothes were torn. They could not hold back their tears. When they saw the wounds on her body when covering her in a mat. The flood season that year was very high. Her body was buried right in that mound. It was very lucky to find a place to bury the dead. Everyone pity for the ill-fated girl. They plug a few incense sticks and pity back. It was a windy afternoon. The sudden death of the girl no one explained the reason. Since then, it has been more than 20 years. The story seems to go into oblivion because of this ancient land. The sudden death has been too much, partly because of the snakes, partly because of the serious diseases. But the name of Mrs. Chin became obsessed with people, because no one remembers what the girl's name is, so they call our mother's name. They mentioned that place with a scared voice. For a long time, no one dared to go there, especially men, because that place lurked a ghost of a deadly girl carrying resentment of revenge. It is said that Ms. Chin's daughter died of being humiliated by someone in the area, so any man who passed by was killed by her.